Welcome to my studio. I would rather be here than any other place on earth with my little best friend, Bailey. My name is Cheryl Lynch and I live outside of Philadelphia and I'm an empty nester with my husband right now. I have two sons that are both married and who live in the area and a little grandson named Henry. I've been quilting since 1992, since we moved to Pennsylvania from New Jersey, and it has been the greatest gift that I've ever been given. I actually went to school to study chemistry, and I have a bachelor's degree in chemistry from Simmons College and a master's from MIT. And I worked for a few years and then I became a stay-at-home mom. And while I was at home, I had a bunch of little different businesses and then I started taking quilting classes and I was hooked and I've had so much fun doing it. When I'm not in my quilting studio, I'm usually outside riding my bicycle. I have ridden my bicycle in so many different places in the United States and outside of the United States. I've ridden my bike across the state of North Carolina. I've ridden in Ohio and Florida, in France and Spain. And um, one year, my husband and I even did a bike and barge trip in Holland. So sometimes bicycling is the inspiration for some of my quilts, and I'd like to share them with you. Well, here I am in front of my design wall, and in a little bit I'll share with you how my husband and I made it. But the first quilt I wanted to share is called Crossroads, and it's really about the battle between quilting and bicycling in my life, my two loves, other than my little puppy and my husband. So basically, when I'm out riding my bike a lot, I'm not spending much time in the studio. And when I'm in the studio creating and sewing, I'm not on my bike much. And then I become very grumpy because I get unfit. So I made this using hand-dyed fabric for the little blocks along the edge. And then the tree was inspired by um, Gustav Klimt, and that was all done by hand, and there's little buttons there for embellishment. Another quilt I made, I made as a block for the 100 Blocks magazine. And I love the block so much that I decided to make a full-size, well, a, a full-size wall hanging from it. And this is called um, Got Wheels. And so there's the bicycle block and it um, has a little flag, you know, when we were kids and would ride those banana bikes. And then the alternate blocks are sayings about riding a bike. Life is a beautiful ride and enjoy simple pleasures. And I had a lot of fun making this, and this is really a very favorite quilt of mine. It's a very happy quilt. One of the, I guess that's a favorite quilt. I have lots of favorite quilts. But one of my favorite pieces I made is this, it's a fiber book. So on the first page, a little bicycle silk screen that my friend Kelly gave me, and it says, ride on. And each page of the book is a different thing about bicycling. So on the first page, here I am getting off the ferry in Spain with my bike. And that's one of my favorite things to do is to ride a boat or ride over a bridge with my bike. And it talks about how I feel when I'm on my bike. And here is a page about Lance Armstrong, who at the time I made it was my hero. And I even cut one of those Livestrong bands and put it on the page. Here's a quote by JFK about how he felt about bicycling. And here are these circles, and I used some Dupioni silk with it. And here are different photos of me and my bike in different places where I've ridden. And this I thought I want to do like a contemporary kind of um, page. And here I use my computer to print ride, 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 put your head down and pedal. And I think that's a good advice when you're facing adversity. So I made one page at a time, and then I put them together to make a book, and the book opens so that it's a great uh, piece to hang on a vertical, vertical um, space in your house. And inside of each page is Peltex, which is a very stiff um, uh, uh, interfacing, and that's what gives it its body. So right on. When I'm ready to start a new project, I usually go through different things that I've been saving, and I do some research. So one of the things that I've kept over the years is a journal, and it's really a creative journal. It's not a journal about what I do every day, but when I see 
different things in magazines that inspire me. I might pull them out. Um, sometimes I do a little bit of sketching, postcards, whatever I see. Magazines are certainly good. These are um, advertisements from a craft magazine, and they're just shapes and colors that I love. This was in a craft magazine, and I have to share with you that this teapot, I love these, this teapot, and these triangles and the dots were what inspired the border for my Crossroads quilt. So that's funny that they both showed up at the same time because I have lots and lots of these journals. So if I don't find something in my journal to spark me or go back to to look for, then I will get on the computer and I'll go to Pinterest and kind of start Googling a bunch of stuff on Pinterest. And I also go look through all my photos that I've taken on my travels. I find a lot of inspiration when I travel, especially um, when you're in big cities. The architecture really turns me on, I have to say. I love wrought iron railings. I love uh, patterns in the sidewalks. Um, so any architectural features I really look for. The, um, the Art Deco buildings are very, very inspiring. So that's what I do when I'm ready to start a new project and I go to my resources for ideas. So when you talk about what tools are important to me, my camera is one of the most important tools. And I have a camera with me wherever I go, even my iPhone. And those iPhones take pretty darn good pictures. And especially if you're using them for inspiration. One of my other favorite tools, and I can't, I have to share it, is Curvalicious, because it's mine. And if you, if you uh, choose to do the project, you'll get to see how it's used. But um, I've had a lot of fun with Curvalicious. When I'm designing, I love this circle template because I can get circles of any different sizes. If I want bigger circles, then I head to my kitchen and I use plates and lids and cups and glasses, and those are good for circles. And then this is something that I've just come across recently and around for a little while. They call them um, Wonder Clips. And these are really great instead of pinning because it holds your fabric together if you're doing a binding or if you're trying to put a zipper in, places where pins tend to dis distort the fabric. I love these and I've been using them a lot. So those are my favorite tools. Now I'd like to give you a tour of my studio and you can see my little friend there is waiting to and wondering what the heck is going on. So I'm in a room that's right off the kitchen and I will just try and pan around to get the whole room in and I'll tell you a little bit about my special features that make this a special place to me. This is actually my dining room and I live in a very traditional uh, colonial house, I guess it's called colonial, and the dining room is connected to the living room and there's a walkthrough between them. But what my husband did is he took the walkthrough, which would be right over here, and on the other side of the wall, which is my living room, he put up false doors. So it looks like their doors going into another room, but on this side, we put in shelves, so it kind of blocks it off. Almost all the furniture in here is from Ikea, and it's nice, I use nice white um, furniture. So those are bookshelves, and then I have two um, closets. And on this closet, and I can't take credit for this because I read this somewhere on the internet, it has hooks drilled into the door, and I hang my rulers from there. So I have hooks screwed in, or I guess you could use the command hooks um, to hang rulers if you like, but that's um, a nice way to store my rulers because I basically have run out of horizontal space. And my husband and I make a joke and we say that in our next life, we're gonna live in a house with no horizontal surfaces because they seem to get filled so quickly. And then on this wall, you saw it before with my quilts. This is, let's see if I can back up far enough. This is my design wall. And it's 
four by eight sheets of half inch insulation that screwed into the wall and I covered it with gray felt. I used spray based and I covered it and stretched it and pinned it on um, all four sides. And I use my design wall a lot. Uh, I couldn't do my designing and making my quilts without it. I also have a piece of Ikea furniture that is nice for storage, but on top of it, I took a um, two by eight sheet of particle board and I covered it with batting and um, I, that um, metallic, it's not really metallic, the silver ironing fabric and I covered it and that is my ironing surface. So it's nice and empty now, but again, it gets covered with stuff and half the time I'm moving it out of the way. So today I'll have a very nice day with a very clean ironing surface. So that's it. So my one, oh, I don't want to make you seasick. So here's my design wall, my ironing surface, my comfy chair, the entrance to the uh, kitchen. And here is my other wall filled with lots of thread. And I'm a little embarrassed to share it with you because it's really mumbo, mumbo jumbo, which is how my life is most of the time. But on top of the thread, I took one of those Ikea bookshelves and I turned it sideways. And turning it sideways, it gave me a place for my printer and my books and papers and, and other important things. And then you can see on top all my knickknacks from, uh, that inspire me from bicycling, or not inspire, but I've accumulated from bicycling along the way. And here's my puppy again. And I do have a, um, a sewing cabinet that my sewing machine sits in. But next to it, again, it's another Ikea piece of furniture. And this is where I do all my cutting. And if I'm quilting a big quilt, I move the cutting mat out of the way, which gives me a lot more room uh, for, to hold up my quilt. So this is my happy place. And I hope I've given you some ideas and at least you know where I am most of the time. You can envision me in my studio. I started out my professional quilting life designing Jewish quilting patterns. So thus, my email address is oivequilts at yahoo.com. So if you ever you know, email me or buy something from me, that is the address that you will receive it from. And I don't think I'll ever give that up because I've had it for lots and lots of years. But if you want to learn more about my quilty life and share with me all the fun and inspiration, you can visit my blog, which is not Oive Quilts, which is Cheryl Lynch Quilts blogspot.com. And I talk about where I get my inspiration from, design ideas, I share tutorials, I share my travels. And occasionally I'll share a bike ride, but not that often these days. I also um, have a website where you can see lots of the quilts that I've made in the past. This is before Curvalicious, and that's CherylLynchQuilts.com. Curvalicious also has its own website, Curvalicious.net, and you can see all the different things you could do with Curvalicious, and you can watch a video how to use Curvalicious, and that's got links to a couple of free tutorials. Uh, Facebook is Cheryl Lynch Fiber Arts. And then I have my Etsy shop where you can buy Curvalicious, Curvalicious patterns, plus lots of Dupioni silk kits. So Dupioni silk is my other favorite um, quilt type to work with. So there are kits there and um, tips for working with Dupioni. So those are all the places you can see me, or maybe I'll see you on the road on a bike. Fun travels.